Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and this is, as you know, this is Shackleton the Explorer. This will be uh, Shackleton's uh, last uh, appearance on my videos for about three weeks because I'm heading off to uh, Madrid, Spain for the COP25 uh, climate conference. And I'm going to look into, when I'm there, I may have to pick up a, find a black stray cat somewhere and so I can have a uh, a double, a doppelganger, a Shackleton doppelganger. But I don't think he's uh, very happy today, so so we'll just uh, set him free. So, you know, today it was like, do I pack for my trip or do I do some climate videos? So I thought, well, let's do a couple climate videos first. I'm going to talk about the very important concept of climate restoration. You know, people ask me all the time about what I think the best climate solutions are, and there isn't really one solution, but we can talk about climate restoration, our attempts to restore a healthy climate. A healthy climate being the climate that was enjoyed by our grandparents when they were children. So, you know, if we could get back to the climate of a hundred years ago, if we could get CO2 levels significantly lower, then we could go a long way to restoring a healthy climate. So already there's, there's huge impacts of abrupt climate change that we can look out the window, we can see them occurring around, around uh, in our environment every day. So we need to talk about climate interventions. You know, there, there's, there's there, you know, commonly we talk about mitigation. So that's removing carbon dioxide emissions, bringing them down to zero. We talk about adaptation, which is what we need to do to adjust to the extreme weather events and the other effects that are occurring already in our existing climate. But the idea of climate restoration, which we need to get that into the jargon, get that into the public discourse, not just mitigation and adaptation, but we need restoration to restore a healthy climate. So I'm going to talk all about the Healthy Climate Alliance and the Climate Restoration found Foundation in this video and uh, probably in the next one or two. Okay, so this is a white paper called Climate Restoration Solutions to the Greatest Threat Facing Humanity and Nature Today. It's a 43-pager and I will go through it, but first I want to show my website, paulbeckwith.net, and this is a recent post where I talked about the stunted growth in the Arctic sea ice refreeze. And please consider making a donation to PayPal to support my work and to help support my trip and costs to the COP conference. I want to thank everybody that's donated recently in aid of my trip and also my ongoing videos. There's also a fundraiser, so you can donate here at the PayPal. There's also a fundraiser, a GoFundMe fundraiser. You know, if you just type Google GoFundMe, you know, Paul to COP25, you will find it. And uh, I'm well on my way to the objective for, for getting the funding for, for travel, et cetera, to the, to the conference. If you don't follow me on Twitter, please do so, Paul H. Beckwith. And uh, this is my recent, the recent blog and my videos on the stunted growth in the Arctic sea ice refreeze. And I just posted up this tweet here. I'm thinking of changing my image. Do you prefer exhibit A or exhibit B? Okay, <laughs> these, are, these are some, um, you know, a friend of mine had this um, for Halloween and he went to this party wearing this. And lo and behold, a friend of his had this and it wasn't planned in ahead of time. So I borrowed both of these wigs and I will be bringing them to the cops. So you might meet, see me in a press conference with my colleague and we'll just have to have a big uh, flip a coin or something to see whether I look like this or whether I look like this at the uh, press conference. Okay, so if you Google foundationforclimaterestoration.org, you can find the website here and about them. So the, the mission statement is very, very simple for climate restoration here. The vision is to restore a safe and healthy climate like we had 100 years ago. 
The mission is to catalyze action to build full capacity by 2030 to restore the climate by 2050. The founding question, how might humanity reverse global warming and safely restore the climate and the Arctic ice by the year 2050? Okay, and the principles are pretty basic too. We have an obligation to our children and future generations to give them a climate similar to or better than our grandparents had 100 years ago. Saying we can't restore a healthy climate or that others will block our actions does not absolve us from this obligation. It's only impossible if we don't try. We will restore the climate safely for both humanity and nature. We'll ensure the safety of our actions and inaction by publicly monitoring critical systems such as human health, agriculture, ocean health, sea level, infrastructure, natural ecosystems, and use that data to continuously adjust and improve climate restoration processes and technologies. You know, and this includes everybody, okay? Um, and there's a big, there's a board of directors and leadership teams, et cetera, et cetera, and you know a whole bunch of different partners and affiliations. The Arctic Mer Methane Emergency Group, um, which I was on since the beginning almost, um, is right here, and there's lots of other different groups involved. So please check this out on the website. Um, th they have uh, you know under their press room. There's lots of um, current press releases on what they're doing. Uh, for example, One Man's Quest to Remove Carbon Pollution from the Atmosphere. Uh, this is an article about Peter Fiakowski, who's a, one, the founder of the Healthy Climate Alliance. And I've been on emails and groups with these people for, for many, many years. Okay, um, so this is the uh, climate restoration white paper which I'll talk about now in, in great detail. Okay, so this is a paper, a 43-page white paper, which you can just Google the title, you know, and put white paper, and you can find it. And I highly encourage that you read it, especially for people that are very, very down on climate change. They throw up their hands. They think there's nothing we can do. It's too late. I encourage them to read the, this white paper with an open mind. And, uh, you know, I will be talking about this, these, the, the, these ideas more at the COP25 in Madrid in press conferences. Okay, so basically, so we have kelp, one of the fastest growing um, plants. We have coral reefs with their enormous biodiversity. You know, we have, you know, sea turtles. Who doesn't love sea turtles? Um, you can have a look at all of the details, but I'll sort of give you a good overview of some of the key aspects of this, this paper. So, of course, this is kind of obvious, and I've said this many times myself. If you do not change the direction that you're heading, you may end up where you're heading. And we're heading, up, heading to a very, very dystopian world, a world completely devoid of Arctic sea ice, a world where the superstorms and extreme weather events and droughts and floods you know, wreak more and more havoc on our planet. Think of how things are now and think of them being a hundred times worse. I mean, that's the type of world that, that we're rapidly heading to. So humans and current ecosystems require a climate that's similar to the one in which we evolved and flourished. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't agree. I mean, I didn't um, edit this. I wasn't involved in writing this. And I don't agree with everything in here, of course. Like it says here, the global community has achieved substantial climate progress as, in, as experienced by every new wind farm, solar array, and while not driven, as well as a brilliantly negotiated 2015 Paris Climate Agreement. I mean, I, you know, I, there's a, we, we've achieved some climate progress. Fossil fuels are still growing like crazy. Uh, I don't think Paris was brilliantly negotiated, but, you know, I mean, read it with an open mind and you won't agree with everything. But things like this, um, the current international commitment to limit temperature rise to 2 degrees C, it would still leave atmospheric CO2 at well over 450 parts per million in 2050. This level is 50% higher than we've ever survived long term. The highest we've lived at long term is 300 parts per million. Add 50% of 300 or 150, to, and that's a 450. 
Okay, um, that was about three million years ago when we were at 450 before. Camels roamed the Arctic. Um, would 8 billion humans survive conditions so radically different from those that enabled the growth of agriculture and civilizations? The answer pretty clearly is no. 300 parts per million and lower was safe for humanity. Nothing higher has passed the test. You know, of course, every week we see climate change coming into sharper and sharper focus, more and more heat waves, fires, floods, drought, you know, you name it, all around the world. You know, you can look at the Australian fires, you can look at the massive droughts places, you can look at massive flooding other places. I mean, we're, we're in the soup right now. But we don't have to leave dangerous, unprecedented conditions to our progeny. We have the technology and financing now to reclaim the climate of over a century ago. What we need is a commitment to do so. And again, I'm reading, I'm, I'm discussing what's in the paper. I'm not saying that I agree with every single thing. We may have the tech, we have good technologies now. We can do lots of things, but the big question is, are they scalable? And can we pay for them? Who will pay for them with governments being any, you know, dragging their feet and huge bureau bureaucracies in place? Okay, um, climate restoration is not a substitute for mitigation, which prevents or reduces greenhouse gas emissions, or adaptation, which prevents or reduces damage from global warming climate change, but it's a timely, much needed addition to them. So think of climate restoration as something separate um, from mitigation and from adaptation. You know, and we need a goal. I mean, the goal of climate restoration would be to ensure the survival of humanity by restoring CO2 to levels proven to be safe for human civilization by the year 2050. And those levels are about uh, the 300 parts per million CO2. And, and the metrics are very easy. We can measure the concentration in the atmosphere. And if we, you know, we need to stop the, the ever increasing growth rates, we need to zero them. And then we need to bend them down and get down to 300 parts per million by 2050. Now, this is a very ambitious goal. It's similar to the ambitious goal of eradicating smallpox, for example, of flying to the moon and back safely. It's ambitious, it's time bound, it's specific and measurable. Okay, um, you need an explicit goal to get a coalition to rally behind it and make the unimaginable a reality. Okay, so with the smallpox, the vaccine was developed in 1796. It wasn't until 160 years later that the WHO, the World Health Organization, announced a program to eradicate smallpox. The goal mobilized the world and they eradicated smallpox in 21 years in 1980. So, so they started the program in 1959 and by 1980 smallpox was eradicated. When John F. Kennedy announced the Moonshot program in the early 60s, the necessary technology didn't even exist. Um, but they set that goal, they developed the technologies and achieved the goal. Now, the argument in this paper is that climate restoration is much further along, the technology exists today. Maybe, you know, it, it, that's, again, um, a lot of the technologies are very, very simple, like, like uh, planting trillions of trees. You know, it's simple in theory, it's difficult in practice, difficult to scale it up. Um, but according to this, uh, technology is available, the financing is obtainable, um, and we need to just get to it. So the Foundation for Climate Restoration developed this paper to define what climate restoration is, restore hope that young people and their children can have a bright future. You know, a lot of people are getting very negative and dismal about humanity's prospects in the near-term and mid-term future because of abrupt climate change. Climate restoration uh, the paper wants to show that climate restoration is possible and introduce some methods that get to get you thinking about that could work starting now if we just scale them up. Suggest how policy individuals and organizations can help ensure the survival of humanity and inspire leaders and readers to join the global coalition for climate restoration. Okay, so clear and simple, plain and simple. The goal of climate restoration is to restore atmospheric CO2 by 2050 to the safe, healthy levels last seen a century ago, that 300 parts per million level. Of, that's the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere in parts per million. OK, 
Okay, so re restoring the climate means reducing atmospheric CO2 from 415 today to 300 ppm by 2050. And I'll continue this in a second video. Thank you for listening.